Hi guys, it's John from Owens Estate Planning Services and I want to put a little video together on the Court of Protection. So first of all, let's just start with who they are. They're a, a court, funnily enough, who hear cases basically on behalf of incapacitated people from relatives who are basically saying, can we access this person's affairs and control their estate because there's no power of attorney in place. Essentially, the person who's lost capacity didn't get anything done beforehand. It's now too late. Relatives come to the court and say, please, can you help us? So the court protection, they don't know the person who's lost capacity. That's the starting point. That's where you've got to come at it from. So they're not just going to start handing powers out willy nilly. You know, it doesn't matter that you're the husband or the wife or the son or the daughter. They don't know you. And their assumption is that, well, if the person really wanted you to have those powers, they'd have done a power of attorney already. So the starting point is they're going to treat you with suspicion, pretty much. OK, now the, there's a process that takes somewhere between six to nine months. It can be more. I've heard plenty of cases go on further than that. But let's just say six to nine months on average. The costs are quite eye watering. So if we start with just the general application to get the get the case started, you're looking at £365 just to get going. OK, now, if the, they decide that they need a court, like a hearing, there's a hearing charge of £485 in addition. Now, I don't know the exact number of cases that will require a hearing, but it's certainly not uncommon. There's also a charge of £230 should you choose to appeal the hearing if it wasn't obviously in your favour. That's just kind of the court section. Once, and this is on the assumption that you do get an order given to you, because there's absolutely no guarantee that the court will give you any power, and even if they do, it might be a limited power, they're going to now do, well, they're going to appoint you as what's called a deputy of the court. And of course, they're going to charge you a fee for that. So at the moment, the charge is £320 per annum in a standard case. If the case is, if the, uh, sorry, if the estate is particularly small, there's a, a smaller charge, but the general fee will be £320. If you haven't been appointed as a deputy yet of the court, or before, they're also going to charge you £100 to do an assessment fee. So you can just see these costs are going up and up and up and up. There's also another element to this, that until you actually speak to people who've been through the process, you just don't realise. And there's a thing called a security bond, which essentially is a type of insurance that you have to take out to protect the incapacitated person's money. I guess just in case you did something, um, you know, unruly with the money. Now that charge seems to vary from person to person that I spoke to, and it seems to be dependent on the size of the estate that the deputy is looking after. So it doesn't seem to be a hard and fast rule as to how much that might be. And then on top of all of that, most people will get a solicitor to help them through this process. So you're going to have to pay their fees as well. So just as a little example, I can't give you the exact name of the person because of client confidentiality. But I've actually got a client who I was doing power of attorney for. And she called me in in the first place because her husband had had a stroke only very early 50s. And he was completely incapacitated at the time. She was already four months into the court of protection process to try and get deputyship for him because they were married they've got joint assets and he had assets in his own name and she was completely locked out of all of them she saw how much of a problem this was and thought well i can't put my loved ones through this if something happens to me so we got going on power of attorney anyway the power of attorney process was probably done and dusted within uh, about 10 weeks and by the time i came back she still hadn't completed but we had a catch up over time and, and i just kept Kind of in touch just to see how it was all going so i was very interested to see for her what it was like and and the costs that were involved so in this lady's particular case by the time the actual court process had finished and solicitors fees and things like that had all been totaled up she reckoned her bill was around about three and a half grand so pretty staggering it take, took her about nine or ten months for the whole process to go through and in her own words, she said it was incredibly intrusive. Some of the questions that they asked about their relationship as a, as a married couple, she said were very intrusive and made her feel very uncomfortable. 
and you can probably tell already just from this, just what an, uh, an unpleasant experience it was. She then thought when, you know, if, if she needs to be acting as a deputy for the next five years, as an example, by the time she's added on these yearly deputyship fees, she estimated the total amount she would have spent would have been around about five grand. And that's just to access her husband's affairs and to lift like the embargo, as it were, on their joint assets. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. And people just simply don't realise that the court of protection either exists, and if they do know they exist, they don't realise how just how much power they've got and how much money it costs the average person to go through this process. The uh, I guess the moral story from here is if you can, if you have time and foresight, you get a power of attorney. If not, just beware of the uh, implications having to go through the court of protection.